This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute and available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to kick things off with something interesting. And I've seen some really weird things for sale on Facebook Marketplace, and I'm sure you have. But get a load of this. Some guy is asking you to pay him $500, what appears to be a massive old butane tank filled with butane. That's right. Uh, It says huge, old, and very heavy, uh, full or almost full of butane, need to have it gone ASAP, must be able to move it. I am not going to move it for you, and I want $500. So essentially, he wants you to move what could be a bomb, Mm, okay, and pay him $500 for it with all the butane, Uh, which reminds me, what weighs more, a gallon of water or a gallon of butane? Which weighs more, a gallon of water or a gallon of butane? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, a gallon of water. Why? Because butane is a lighter fluid. Oh, that was bad. And on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kim Commando, America's Digital Goddess, here with you once again. It's the biggest show. It's the best show. It's the most trusted show about all things digital. You're about ready to get more tech smarts, as I like to say, because every single thing is now a tech thing. And you can find my award-winning show on over 420 top stations throughout the United States. And we're streaming in your favorite radio app. Just search for my last name, Commando. And you can find us as a podcast or webcast commercial free over at commando.com. In the upper right-hand corner of the homepage, there's this big, bright, beautiful yellow button that says the Commando Community. And that's where that magic happens. And a special shout-out goes to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network radio serving more than 375,000 American servicemen and women in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the Space Force in 175 different countries. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open. At one triple eight eight two five fifty two fifty four 855 is the way to join us. All righty. Every single day, I go to at least 35 different websites to make sure that we're both up to date about what's going on in the tech universe. And here are five things you need to know that's happening right now. And let's start with something everyone does when you want to buy a product. Hmm. You check the reviews, right? You want to know if that that shirt is running too big. You want to make sure that that toilet bowl brush does everything that you want it to do. Now, you may not know this, but reviews are actually something that Amazon pioneered back in 1995. It was one of the first sites to really put customer feedback right on the site. But they're scaling that back. So if it's too much work to read all the Amazon reviews, well, they're going to be rolling out AI-generated review summaries that will boil them all down to a single paragraph right there at the top of the product description. But I want you to think about this. Can you really trust a company to truly summarize the product that it's selling to you, that it's making money off of? Okay, we know that AI lies. I mean, but Amazon's AI, maybe it won't lie. Maybe it's not going to give you the fake reviews. I don't know. I have my doubts. Coming in at number two, get a load of these apples. For years, there was always this conspiracy theory that Apple intentionally slowed down iPhones when a new model came out. Planned obsolescence. You probably heard it yourself. But as it turns out, you're not crazy. Maybe your iPhone really did slow down. Apple's been accused of secretly throttling older iPhones in a class action lawsuit. And Apple says, we've never done this. A judge finally told the companies past week, you need to pay up. So how do you know if you've been impacted? You have to have already filed a claim. Now, if you're a regular listener of the Kim Commando Show, I told you about this about, I don't know, a year and a half or two years ago. Uh, impacts the iPhone 6 through 7 Plus before December 21st, 2017. How much can you expect to make? $65. Woo-hoo. Yeah, I know. 
Uh, number three, a roundup of all things Google this past week. Have you ever gotten an important doc from work and an email and told, hey, you got to sign this? It's always been a hassle, right? You have to download it and plug the thing into a PDF reader and then maybe you actually – Maybe you actually were like, oh, I don't even know what I, why I had to do – maybe you're actually even – I have to print it out and then I have to sign it. Well, those days are gone. Why? Because of DocuSign and HelloSign. Well, get this. Google is now adding e-signature tools to Google Docs and Google Drive. This is great. Uh, you can try it out in beta. It works like a charm. Uh, another Google News, Google Photo Memories. You know, it's one of the greatest things that Google actually offers. It takes those sweet photos of you on the family vacay and reminds you about them in these sweet slideshows. Well, a new AI upgrade will let you see co-authored memories, meaning that you can ask everybody in the family or friends to collaborate. You get title suggestions for new albums. You can share them as videos and makes it sharing easier with your iPhone friends. And you can also make a digital scrapbook in a style that AI thinks that you like. You know, love these. Um, Google served me some memories of my mom the other day. You know, I was sitting there at work and I got all teary-eyed um, because I miss her so much. But I was really thankful to see her smiles and hear her voice. And that's those Google memories. All right. Number four, airport food to the rescue. What is this? Yes. When you're in a rush to at the airport, you got two choices. Make it to your gate on time or get some food. Now, some major airports in the United States have come up with a solution. They're going to deliver food right to the gate. That's right. Uh, at Chicago O'Hare, Newark, and JFK, those are the first outfits to really get it. Those, those are the first airports, rather, to get it. Uh, you don't have to download an app to make an order. All you have to do is go to the QR code right next to the gate, tell them what you want, and then somebody's going to be delivering that food pronto. I mean, this is a problem I didn't know that I wanted solved, but... Now I'm glad that it is. And finally, this coming in at number five, $250 an hour. Wow. That's how much you can make doing this uh, job freelance. And you don't need a college degree. Do you know what it is? I was really shocked by this myself when I saw it over at CNBC. Uh, freelance writers. Take that AI. I wouldn't have thought because ChatGPT, I thought would have like kicked all the freelance writing to the curb. But as it turns out, Freelancer.com did a study. So the job postings are up 58% compared to last quarter. Now, I play around with ChatGPT. I tell you, I don't think that it writes very well. I mean, it does if you just want boring writing. But if you want good writing, I mean, talking about great writing, that you actually need to have somebody who knows how to write. So how do you get a job like this? Just put yourself out there like on Upwork or Fiverr and don't be shy about your rates uh, because AI doesn't have the right stuff. Oh, womp womp. Get cash for clothes at Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley. It's so easy. Recycle, earn cash, repeat. We pay cash on the spot for your trendy, gently used clothing, shoes, and accessories. At Plato's Closet, we buy all seasons, all day, every day. It's time to clean out your closet and cash in. Bring in your denim, graphic tees, athletic wear, shoes, handbags, and more. Sell your styles to Plato's Closet for cash. Then, do it again. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Video games. Yeah, they're just a ton of fun, right? I mean, they're challenging and they're also a connection for so many people. But for some video games, there's this line between fun and then it turns into addictions. And joining us right now is Logan Visser. He's courageously agreed to share his personal story and his battle with video game addiction. And to tell you a little bit about how bad things have gotten for Logan, at his height, he was playing video games 16 hours a day every single day of the week. And I, I'm sure you know someone close to you who is an avid gamer, and they might even share some of the same symptoms as Logan. And that's why you definitely want to listen up to this en entire chat. Uh, Logan, first of all, thanks for being here. I'm really proud of you for being here uh, because I'm sure it's not easy for you to come out and say, you know, hey, I had a problem. Yeah, thanks, Kim. I, uh, I I think it is tough. It's hard for people to be vulnerable. Um, but there's a quote by Brene Brown. I'm going to butcher it. But pretty much she says that problems can't get solved until we pull them out into the light. And so that's kind of been my life motto for the last few years is just trying to be OK with, you know, presenting my weaknesses as well as my strengths so that I can try to 
take care of them. And also help people in the process, too. Absolutely. You know, 100%. Um, let's jump back in time just a little bit. When did the video game addiction start for you? So, yeah, that's a great question. The addiction itself didn't start until my teenage years, but I think the seeds of it started as a kid because my parents, I had the jackpot lottery as far as childhoods go, um, but they were pretty restrictive as far as video games, right? They didn't want us becoming little video game addicts. And so they restricted us um, pretty much up until I was in high school. And then, uh, you know, as a high schooler, you kind of get more freedom. Yeah, you start kind of making your own decisions more and it's harder for them to control you if you have a desire to do something. And so I found myself really starting to get addicted in high school to cope with the general angst, the general issues that you face as a teenager, you know, whether that's stress from school or social struggles or, you know, break up with a girlfriend, all that stuff. It was, it was kind of my go-to coping mechanism. Well, sure. I mean, high school is tough. And I think a, a lot of people underestimate how it is. I mean, you know, aside from the physical changes and the hormones, and then you are now trying to become independent. So getting into a video game becomes a way to escape, right? Absolutely. And so from there, you know, at first it was just a way to escape. But my parents, you know, they still had some restrictions. They weren't just like, hey, go crazy, do whatever you want. If my grades dropped or performance in sports, things like that, um, if they could tell I was being affected, they would restrict me. Um, and so that kind of set the groundwork. So I feel like I've always had an addictive personality. And so mm -hmm. when, um, when I got out of high school, that's when I really had free reign for the first time in my life, no one to answer to, no one to restrict me whatsoever. And so I just kind of fed into that addictive side of myself more than I ever had before. And it just, it spiraled. It was crazy. I went from, you know, being this well-adjusted senior in high school, still doing sports. I had a job. Gaming, you know, maybe on average five to 10 hours a week to all of a sudden, like you said, 16 hour days. And I'm like, it was just wild how I fell that fast as soon as I had a little bit of room to breathe and do what I wanted. What games were you playing? It was one game. It was just one. And it's actually, um, I don't know if this is still true, but at least a few years ago, it was the most popular game in the world. It's called League of Legends. So did, did your folks step in and say, hey, you know, Look at what you're doing. This is what you're doing with your life. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's easy to hide. It's easy to present a good face to them, especially when you live thousands of miles away or whatever it was. And so, you know, I could I could talk about little interactions that I had with my roommates as if they were a big social thing. Like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, we, we hung out the other night. It was fun. So as far as they were concerned for a while, you know, everything was fine. But um they did notice the amount of communication I had with them was starting to drop off. It was like one call a week before, and then I would go a few weeks without touching base and oh. um, sometimes come up with excuses to not talk to them when they tried to call. And so I think that was kind of where their first warning sign was. But uh, ultimately, it was my big brother that kind of pulled me out of it because um, I'm I'm from Utah. I'm Mormon. And so I went on a two-year Mormon mission, um, and I only really did it because my older brother was – he took me aside one day because we've always had this relationship. And he just said, Logan, like, I love you, bro, but you're a complete loser. Like, there's no getting around it. You're just a loser. God. Like, you, you literally game and sell your plasma so you can buy pizza and soda. And, you know, it's it's kind of pathetic. And, you know, hearing something like that from someone you respect and love, it, it just kind of hit me. Like, it resonated with me big time. And so for a while, I... I cleaned up because I went on a mission and you're not allowed to play video games. And so it was just two years of service in Asia, just, you know, helping teaching English and helping people. Um, but yeah, you can guess as soon as I got back, I just dove right back into it. So did you? Wow. I did. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad. I just got, got started in the same exact game league of legends. And I had a few buddies that I played with and we actually moved in together and uh, we would all, <laughs> Pretty much do the same thing I was doing by myself, but now we do it together. Did your brother come to your rescue again? Uh, no, it wasn't my brother this time. It was, um, I think that after my mission, I started cleaning up my act a little bit. And sure enough, I met an amazing woman who grew up in a family with two brothers that also gamed. And so she had strong feelings about gaming. So from day one that we were dating, she was letting me know she didn't like that gaming. So, so have you stopped 100%? 
what ended up happening was my wife and I, we, we kept talking and um, I'd say the gaming kind of was going away on its own. Right. Life is just better for me when, when my wife is happy and we're, we're on the same page. And so that was starting to diminish anyways. But then we found out she was pregnant and I was like, we found out it was a boy. And for me, it was, if I don't stop gaming, cause I still game quite a bit, he's going to grow up thinking that's normal. He's going to grow up possibly going down the same path that I went down. And that was the last thing I wanted. So I made a YouTube video cause I, I have a YouTube channel going and I interviewed my buddies that I lived with where we used to game together. And in the video, I pretty much made my attention clear, like from, from this day, I'm never playing again. And so the day I uploaded the video was the last game of League of Legends I ever played. Thanks for being here and telling your story. I think you've helped so many people. You don't have any idea how many people that you've helped just now. Hey, I just want to mention, if you are suffering from a video game addiction or if you know someone who is, there's actually something called Olga. It's Online Gamers Anonymous. It's an online support group resource center for people who are addicted to gaming. It uses a 12-step program similar to Alcoholics Anonymous, and they also have Game Quitters. It's a resource started by someone who has actually been there. So again, it's the Online Gamers Anonymous, or you can just search for Olga. All right, we're going to switch gears right now. Let's talk about which apps are worth your location data. Uh, You know, Google Maps only works if you give it your location. And is that loss of privacy worth it if you're lost? Okay, well, your phone's apps send location data to companies every single second. Uber, as I mentioned, Google Maps, Postmates, they all have good reasons because they have to give it. they They need that in order to provide a service to you. So to identify which apps deserve the location, you have to think about how you use it, Okay. But that weird quiz app, you probably don't need to share your location with it. And once you've figured out which ones don't need it, I want you to go into your phone's location permissions. Now, we're going to start with iPhone, and then we'll talk about Android. For your iPhone, you're going to open your settings, scroll down, and tap privacy. And then that's where you can open location services. And just go ahead and check all the app and make sure, check all your apps and make sure you're not giving locations, like I said, to a weird quiz app or, you know, whatever else you might have on there. Uh, for Android users, open your settings, tap on apps, and then again, you're going to click the app that you want to change the location permissions for and just toggle it off. And it's pretty clear cut which ones actually need your location. Think delivery, navigation, and ride share. Everything else, just say no. Get cash for clothes at Plato's Closet in North Charleston in West Ashley. It's so easy. Recycle, earn cash, repeat. We pay cash on the spot for your trendy, gently used clothing, shoes, and accessories. At Plato's Closet, we buy all seasons, all day, every day. It's time to clean out your closet and cash in. Bring in your denim, graphic tees, athletic wear, shoes, handbags, and more. Sell your styles to Plato's Closet for cash. Then, do it again. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. So we are heading into that busy Reddit community, Am I the A-Hole? It's a place where folks bear their soul and their circumstances. And then the crowd steps in, casting votes and their opinions until the ultimate conclusion is reached. Are you or are you not the A-Hole? So now it's time for you to join me. And together we are going to pass judgment. Now I'm going to give you a Reddit post for your consideration. Then you need to decide, is this person or not an A-Hole? But wait, there's more because we always have a special... Special guest primed and ready to embrace the challenge and compete for the ultimate grand prize. That's, of course, the uh, the official Kim Commando show fanny pack. That's I think it's uh, worth about 25 bucks. And joining us this week is Glenn in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi there, Glenn. Hey, Kim. How are you doing? Great. What do you do there? Well, I work in field service for a women's health company. Oh, great. Okay. So uh, this is going to be kind of up your alley, maybe a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and read the story. And then at the end, you have to decide whether or not the person telling the story, writing the story is the a-hole. Okay. You ready? Yes. Okay. So the headline is AITA for kicking out my identical twin for selling nudes online. My sister and I, both 23 years old, have been living in an apartment together with a roommate. Now, my sister didn't have a steady job, so I've been actually paying her portion of the rent. A few weeks ago, she approached me and said that she found a great source of income, 
and she would be able to start paying her share of the rent. I didn't ask too many questions. I was just really happy that she found a job. But I was talking to my roommate two nights ago and found out that my sister started an OnlyFans account. And the way that she's been making her money is that she's been selling naked pictures and videos of herself online. Now, I have nothing against sex workers, but she is my identical twin in every way. We look exactly alike. Now, I don't feel comfortable sharing my body online to strangers. And on top of that, I'm trying to start a career. And I don't want my coworkers, my employers finding this and say, oh, this must be me. So I confronted my sister and told her that I don't want to speak to her again until she deletes that account. She's going to have to move out of the apartment. She's pretty upset about this. So AITA here or what? So what do you think? It's a tough one. Yes, it is. Um, well, I, I I would have to say that she probably is is being a little harsh on her sister. There's probably other ways that she could get her uh, her sister to um, do what she wants. Yeah. And, I mean, I was thinking about it. If it were my sister, I would pay her side of the rent, if I could, of course. And then I would help her find a better job. I just wouldn't say, you know, either you delete this or out. You know, I'm not going to do it. That's not my nature. But kind of reminds me of uh, Phoebe and Ursula from Friends. There was that whole segment about that, a uh, whole story about that. So actually, we don't have an answer here because when you look at the votes, it's, Glenn, it's actually 50-50. 50% say you did the right thing. And 50% say, no, you did the wrong thing. So the Internet's sitting on the fence, and if they move either way, I'll be sure to let you know what the difference is. Now, I know that you uh, that you also called in, but because it's 50-50, we're going to go ahead, and you won, yes, the official Kim Commando Show fanny pack, valued at $25.99. Woohoo! So you can wear that all around Green Bay and be so proud. And I know you have a question for me, so how can I lend a hand? All right. Well, first, I got to check off my bucket list now that I have a Kim Commando fanny pack. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> awesome. I've been a big fan of yours for over 20 years. Um, so I just want to, you probably were nine years old when you started. Uh, you know, I was, I, I was almost 12, but yeah, close. Oh, okay. Very close. Pretty close yes. then. Yeah. All right. Well, my, my question is, is I had submitted a online passport uh, renewal form. And it turned out that it was not a government site. And they charged me $88.83 on my credit Ooh. card to fill out this form. So mm -hmm. I was able to call them up and get. they did refund the money right away. I was surprised. But now I'm concerned that they have all my information. Um, and I, I did go to the BBB, um, submitted a, a complaint to them and the FBI. Okay. So I'm just, but I'm just want to know what do you think I should do to protect my identity? What, did you say it was a passport? Yes, passport renewal. Oh wow, well, yeah. You don't need to pay anybody to do that. Now you know. And everybody else who's listening, yeah. don't Google that. Just go to the government website. That's all you need to do. Um, yes. Yeah, because you just you gave up a lot of you must, a lot of personal information. You just probably had like that sinking feeling when you realized what happened, huh? Yes, exactly. And I, what's what's strange is is they sent me all the forms that I would need to submit with instructions and everything. But there's one thing that was missing on the form, and that's the 2D barcode at the top left corner that was not on the form. And from what I understand, you have to have that in order for them wow. to process it correctly. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what um, I'll tell you what I would do is if I made this mistake, I would totally freeze my credit. And okay. uh, I've got Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Uh, you just have okay. to, you can just do it like, for example, at Experian, it's like 20 bucks a month. Uh, but it's really easy to freeze and unfreeze. You can do it right inside the app. You don't have to call them, send an email, fill out a form or anything. So I would totally freeze my credit. Obviously, monitor your credit report too. Um, also, take a look at, you know, any weird text messages, phone calls, anything like that. Uh, and then you mentioned that you filed a complaint, where did you say, at the BBB and also the FBI? Is that it? Yes, their cyber division. Yep. Okay. Um, IC3.gov. There's also um, identitytheft.gov. 
and that's actually okay. put out by the, the Federal Trade Commission. And that's where you can also report the incident. I think what they're primarily doing there is they're not going to monitor your credit or, or you know, tell you if your identity ever gets stolen. But uh, what I would do is – what they're doing is they're just keeping track of all this so they can go investigate, uh, you know, maybe if there's a, some type of trend with this particular website. Um, okay. The other thing I would do if you haven't done this already, and I've done it, uh, mm-hmm. especially if you own any land – Okay, is go on Zillow and and Redfin uh, and Realtor dot com, and I I have it actually at all three sites. And what I want you to do there is to actually claim ownership of your house, anything, any okay. real estate that you own. And so, like for example, uh, Glenn, I'm really good at all things technical, but sometimes I don't make the best uh, investments. And so, like a neighbor came over to me probably 20 years ago and said, "Oh, we're buying land in Arizona between Phoenix and Tucson, and it's going to be a big city one day." Okay. Well, you know, I went out there to look at it. It's still tumbleweeds, honest to God. Tumbleweeds. Just, you know, like, oh, you know, like, all right. <laughs> but what's happening now is that scammers are uh, primarily from overseas. What they're doing is they're creating fake driver's license and all the other fake materials, and they're selling real estate, houses, as well as land, and then without the owners knowing. Mm. And so okay. uh, the whole idea is that if you claim ownership, on your house and any land or anything like that is that if, in fact, the status of that real estate ever changes is that you'll get an automatic notification because they're basically saying, oh, so your house is pending. Your land is pending, right? And then that's when you can go, hmm, I don't think it's pending. (laughs) Right, right. Okay. (laughs) What's going on? And, uh, you know, some local municipalities that also – uh, counties have actually set up ways for you to monitor your real estate using their portal. And so you might want to just check that out as well. But I would definitely just, you know, make sure that you keep your eyes and ears open for any type of changes. And I, uh, and I'm really glad that you won the fanny pack because now you can check that off your bucket list. Yes. And for those of you who want to buy a fanny pack, head over to kimcommando.etsy.com. Once again, that's kimcommando.etsy.com. All right, let's talk about some steps that you need to take with your old phone before you sell it or you give it away because there are some things that you may have never thought of. Like, for example, uh, number one, you want to back up your device first because what? Your phone has your entire life in one place. I'm talking about your pictures, your contacts, uh, other personal information. So I want to make sure that you back it up. Now, if you do it to the cloud, it's going to cost a monthly fee to cover, maybe some extra storage. And you may be better off using a backup service that you can trust and Uh, We recommend our sponsor, iDrive. Number two, after you back it up, you're going to do a factory reset on your device because this way all your personal stuff stays, well, it's personal, okay? You don't want a new user device having all your data. Uh, Step number three is you're going to protect all your personal information because you want to look at your iCloud or Google Drive so it stays linked unless you manually unlink it. So you want to make sure that you unlink it. And don't forget to remove that SIM card and also, if you have any, any external micro SD cards. And then finally, check the value on your device. You want to look at Apple's current trade in value program. Amazon has the same thing. Or you can look at Declutter or Gazelle to make sure that you're getting the best price. And of course, you can always check on eBay as well. Uh, if you need all the steps for this, look no further than the official homepage of the Kim Commando Show. And there you're going to see a link that says Show Picks. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There, they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. 
Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. Elizabeth in Des Moines, Iowa. Well, I don't have a problem that you haven't already solved, but I do have a scam story I would like to tell you and the rest of the listeners so they're aware of. And, oh, um, that's awesome. So uh, back in March, I fell victim to the PayPal scam, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with that one because you had the other caller that lost a whole lot of money on that PayPal yeah. scam, and I also lost a lot of money on that. So since that time, I have made all the proper corrections that you suggested to be made, although it really it was my fault, the whole thing, in that sense. But anyway, uh, so I've been kind of paranoid about calls and texts and emails and all of that, so I'm very careful. But I got uh, a text yesterday that just really was shocking to me. So here in Iowa, we're a pretty friendly bunch, you know, nice people. (laughs) And uh, so I received a text from someone I didn't know, and this person said, Hi, Jenny, Mary, Fran, and Sue and I are going to take a trip to Mason City. Would you like to join us? Now, that was very um, personal type of information, all those people's names as well as the city, which is right in Mm -hmm. our area here. But I didn't know who any of those people were. So oh, okay. I thought to myself, oh, well, she must have you know, put the wrong phone number in there. Happens. So I responded and said, wrong number. Then she responded to me and said, oh, thank you very much. I just put in the wrong digits. I'm so, it was so nice, a nice person like you, and blah, blah. And I said, no problem. And then I, that was the end of that. Well, about three hours later, I received another email from her, a uh, text from her, and she said, well, I just want to thank you again for um, help, you know, doing that for me. And you're such a nice person. And my name is Wendy, and I think I would like to be your friend. Oh, and then I deleted her, chopped her up, and got rid of her. <laughs> but my, I'm glad. what was so disturbing about that, Kim, was the fact that the scammers are using all of this local personal information you know, the name of your sure. city, that's the next town over to you, and names of people that are familiar, and even the way of talking. And so I think it is just so important to just really, you got to watch your technology, as you know. But I know I have a lot of friends that don't watch their technology. They're not sure what they're doing half the time. And I think hey, it's and you know what scary. we've. You know, and Elizabeth, I, I'm sure you heard this story. It's probably about eight years ago now. This woman gets a text message from a a guy and t- talking about Thanksgiving dinner. And she and 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 she's like, Thanksgiving dinner. And then it turns out the, the guy was a kid and he had nowhere to go for Thanksgiving dinner. So they, they talked all about this over text. And so she's like, why don't you come to my house for Thanksgiving dinner? OK, so the kid goes over to happen in Phoenix. Kid goes over to this woman's house for Thanksgiving dinner. OK, every year since then, he goes to her house for Thanksgiving dinner and they met over a text message. OK, yeah. so yeah. so it's like, OK, could that happen to me? Mm, maybe not. Don't think you're that lucky. But, you know, all, all right. of a sudden you're going to become friends with this person. And then before you know well, it, it's like. Then they're gonna then they're gonna try to get you by your emotional hooks, and then and before you know exactly it, they're gonna they do. Yeah, and then they're gonna start asking you for some money, and of course, the whole idea is that you are gonna give them money, right? And then after you give them money once, twice, three times, that's when you normally smarten up and go, hmm, I don't think they wanted to be just my friend. Yes, if you need friends, folks. Go to church, go to synagogue, go to temple, wherever you go, and uh, make some friends there. Because you know what? You can see them in person. Elizabeth, thanks for your call today. Appreciate you getting through. You know, I don't know if I told you guys and gals this, but I started a band with friends. And um, we called it 999 Megabytes. That's right, 999 Megabytes. But unfortunately, we still haven't gotten 
a gig yet. Oh, that was a bad one. So if you were to take a guess, which country's residents are the most addicted to their phones? Now, if you said the United States of America, I, I know it. Well, you're wrong. The most serious screen addicts are actually in uh, South Africa. They spend 9.5 hours a day looking at their screens. <laughs> I just hope it's not all scamming those of us here in America. Um, Anyway, on the flip side, folks in Japan spend under four hours a day. And we here in America are about seven and a half hours every single day. Now, the average person is awake 17 hours a day. So the health experts say we should be limiting our screen time to two hours or less per day, not counting work or schoolwork. Uh, If you want to go ahead and check that time on your iPhone, go to settings and screen time. And on your Android, go to settings and digital well-being. Mine is about two hours and 41 minutes a day, but that does not include my MacBook. Hey, listen, knowledge is power. You can find me 24-7 over at commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Get cash for clothes at Plato's Closet in North Charleston in West Ashley. It's so easy. Recycle, earn cash, repeat. We pay cash on the spot for your trendy, gently used clothing, shoes, and accessories. At Plato's Closet, we buy all seasons, all day, every day. It's time to clean out your closet and cash in. Bring in your denim, graphic tees, athletic wear, shoes, handbags, and more. Sell your styles to Plato's Closet for cash. Then, do it again. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.